What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech. Once again, I'm excited to share with you the review for the hash rates of the NVIDIA RTX A4000 GPU. To be clear, I have to give a huge shout out to ProDirect Mining for letting me borrow this card for review. And there is no sponsorship from them, but in return for, of course, basically going up there, doing the interview and posting that on the channel, they have provided it for me for this particular video. And you can check out links down in the description for access to possibly additional GPUs or an additional area where you can purchase GPUs from that can be trusted as I've toured the facility and basically made sure that they are legit. That being said, we are going to get into the review right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Gamersups. Gamersups provides a healthy alternative to sugary energy drinks with delicious flavors like Misfits Melon or my favorite Blue Raz. I use the Gamersups as an alternative to support my active lifestyle outside of content creation. Caffeine free options are great for late night gaming after the kids have gone to bed. And my favorite part about Gamersups is that they accept cryptocurrency. And for a limited time, when you purchase a tub with cryptocurrency, you will receive a Bitcoin shaker. Follow the affiliate link in the description and don't forget to use code SOAT at checkout. Welcome back. So like always, I like to start off with the specifications of the GPU and we have the data sheet pulled up here from NVIDIA. This is the official data sheet and what we have is 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 and that is on a 256 bit bus and that totals out to 448 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. It has error correcting code, which in short is ECC type memory. And that kind of sets it apart from, of course, your desktop line RTX GPUs. To be clear though, this doesn't necessarily affect mining in any significant way. It's primarily for data center use. It has 6,144 CUDA cores, 192 tensor cores and 48 ray tracing cores. It does support, of course, a PCI Express 4.0. You do have essentially four DVI or DisplayPort 1.4a ports, and it is a single slot GPU, which is actually quite nice for server style mining cases. Now this GPU is quite unique in the fact that it does have GDDR6 with a large memory bus, meaning it should be good for mining at least traditional algorithms. And so the testing methodology here, of course, is everything overclocked, at least within MSI Afterburner, we are utilizing Windows 11. And then as far as the miners, we are on the latest updated miners and we tried multiple miners to get the best performance out of it. So an example of that is for Flux, you get the best hash rate out of Mini Z. However, on the Ethereum side, you want to bump over to T-Rex to get a little bit better hash rate in both the Ethereum algorithm as well as for Ergo. Let's go ahead and get into the details for it. And I'll pull up my data sheet here. Starting things off with Ethereum, which is the ET hash algorithm. That'll be coins like Ethereum and of course, Ethereum Classic and Quark coin. We have 64 mega hash a second at 155 watts from the wall. Let's go ahead and chat a little bit about the testing methodology. We do have a separate 750 watt gold rated power supply that I have jumped the 24 pin on to power the riser that's being utilized along with the GPU itself through its single six pin power adapter. What this allows us to essentially do is get the actual power from the wall so you know what you would be paying on your power bill. You can get better efficiency by using higher voltages as well as using higher rated power supplies, for example, a 
platinum rated power supply. This does account for efficiency and is the total power that you would expect in a home mining situation. Moving on in algorithms, we have Crypto Knight GPU, which has been requested quite a bit lately, and that's going to be 3,629 hash a second at 162 watts. Moving on from there, we have Cortex, which is going to be 2.25 hash a second at 163 watts. For Auto Lycos, algorithm we have 155 mega hash a second at 155 watts for the octopus algorithm we have 51 mega hash a second at 163 watts from the wall for zell hash we have 45 hash a second at 163 watts from the wall for kapow we have 28 mega hash a second at 163 watts from the wall. And on Firo proof of work, we have 27 mega hash a second at 163 watts from the wall. We also tested the Ton network and we had 2.8 giga hash a second at 163 watts from the wall. In addition to that, we did take a look at dual mining and those numbers are a little bit different, of course, than what you get with solo mining for Ton. In the case of ETH plus Ton dual mining, when dual mining, you have 58 mega hash a second on Ethereum, and you end up with 934 mega hash a second on Ton coin. I did check, of course, the dual mining for ALF or ALFVM. And for that one, it maintains 60 mega hash a second on Ethereum. And for ALF, it had 330 mega hash a second. We can look at profitability for these coins. And so let's go ahead and do it for what to mine. Keeping in mind, of course, here that it's very important to note that this is an ever changing thing. And depending on network difficulty, your power cost, etc mileage may vary. For Ethereum, we had $2.12 a day after 10 cents a kilowatt hour. For Equilibria, it came in second at $1.82 a day after power. Conceal came in at $1.80 a day after power. Ryo came in at $1.69 a day after power. Conflex at $1.36 a day after power. Ethereum Classic at $1.24 a day after power. Quark Chain at $1.23 after power. Ravencoin at $1.16 after power. Ergo at $1.14 a day after power. Firo at $1.08 a day after power. Flux at $0.99 a day after power. And then we have quite a few more ET hash coins and that rounds us out. So what are my overall thoughts on the A4000? Well, the big thing that we got to talk about is going to be the heat. Outside of a server case with proper ventilation, meaning server grade fans that will be really, really loud, it does not work well. The... Basically the heat consumption on the, or the heat output onto that core specifically is very high. It was not abnormal to see it hit when being utilized on algorithms that do utilize the core all the way up to about 87 degrees Celsius with the fan cranked at 100% on an open air bench. So in theory, you really want to build within a server case or a server type case if you decide to go this route. Dual mining definitely looks like it's off the board and out of the question in my humble opinion as the dual mined coin that hits the core is putting too much strain on that core to really want to run 24 seven in my humble opinion. And that's how I would look at it. So if you're looking for basically a good GPU to mine Ergo or an ET hash based cryptocurrency, the A4000 
is fantastic. However, if these move, of course, to proof of stake in the future, or of course with Ergo, it doesn't pan out to remain profitable, then you could be in a pickle as the core heavy focused algorithms, or if it even uses core at all, don't seem to play out that well on these particular GPUs compared to something from the desktop lineup of RTX graphics cards. So that's kind of my wrap up. I hope that you found the video helpful. Be sure to hit the like, comment, subscribe, and notification bell. We have the A2000 coming up next, and I think it's a much better option. You'll have to tune in to see why. Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more, or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.